Okay, so we'll get going very shortly. Thanks everyone for joining us. Um, Jeff's not joining us tonight, but if you have any burning questions for him, feel free to let me know and, and always happy to uh, make sure that those get addressed. So we're here tonight for a, a pre-construction meeting for the property at 16 um, to 20 Hamilton. Um, that property was subject to a zoning bylaw amendment in the past. It has changed owners. Um, so very shortly, the new owners are gonna introduce themselves. Um, so tonight, the focus of the conversation is, is really gonna be the construction impacts timelines, uh, impacts to the sidewalks, impacts to the roadways, um, when we expect completion to be, um, and any other, you know, uh, um, construction related impacts. Um, I am recording this and we will put it on our YouTube page. And I did get an email from, from one person, for example, who wasn't able to attend tonight. So uh, if any of the neighbors are here tonight and, and your neighbors missed it, uh, this will be on YouTube probably early next week. Um, and like I said, Jeff isn't here, but he's pretty up to date on, on what's going to happen. So very shortly, um, I'm gonna turn it over um, to the, the developer and contractor to, they have a, a PowerPoint that they're gonna share um, with some information, and then we'll move into a Q&A. And since there's like so few of us, um, there's only 10 of us total, um, you'll have the, the opportunity to just electronically raise your hand. It's under the reaction button. So here's an example of me raising my hand. Um, and I will call on you and you can turn on your microphone and or video and ask your question. If you're totally, if you don't wanna do that and you wanna you know, stay behind your, your screen, that's also not a problem. You can type something into the um, chat. So I'm just typing an example right there. Um, hopefully you see that. So I'm, I'm happy to take questions um, in whichever way you folks prefer. So I'll get through the presentation and then I'll give everyone the ability to unmute themselves and then I'll take questions in the order that I see the, the hands raised or if things come up in the chat. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to James to introduce himself and his team. All right. Thanks, Fiona. Thank you all for taking the time this evening. Um, my name is James McRae. I'm the uh, president of, of Rutera Corp, uh, which is a portfolio company of the owner. So uh, Concora Capital uh, Partners Inc. is a private equity firm out of Toronto with works across the country. Uh, Lau Waniapa is my partner, so you'll see him as well. Hello. And on the call as well, we also have uh, our, pro our members from our construction team, uh, Michael Safola, who is the project manager for Ellis Dawn and Lee Reed, who is the, going to be the superintendent for uh, Ellis Dawn. Um, those, oh. two those two gentlemen uh, will be full time on site. So uh, have a look at them, member, uh, memorize their faces. And uh, by myself, I'm also Ottawa based, uh, though travel and Lal is in Toronto. So um, that's a brief in intro of us. Uh, Lal, if we could maybe pull up the uh, presentation, we'll do a short presentation. And then as Fiona said, we will uh, open to any questions or uh, concerns that arise. So Concora, uh, this is our, our team composition at a high level. Of course, Concora is the owner and developer of Rutera, a portfolio, a part of Concora is uh, charged with the, the the management of the development of the real estate assets for Concora. Ellis Don, uh, one of the largest uh, construction firms in Canada is our chosen construction manager for this. And uh, our design architectural team is being led by Montgomery Sison, uh, again, a national architectural firm out of Toronto. Uh, we'll go quickly through, uh, we've just inserted a couple renderings of where we're at and what we intend to, to build and what it will look like, uh, our construction schedule, the lo logistical planning that has been developed, and uh, then some general uh, points, and then open it up to a Q&A. Uh, well, you know, Fiona set the mark that we'll kind of freeze on questions during, but um, so we'll wait till the end uh, process-wise, I was going to say, because it's a small group. But, could, could interrupt me at, if you felt so, but uh, this is a view that uh, we've uh, rendered from the, uh, looking from the the park to, from the park across the street to the uh, to the east. Uh, again, a nine-story building, uh, 86 units in total. So, wow. Um, just a snapshot of uh, our anticipated front entrance uh, from, and, and again, another one from the south. 
So here is uh, our, our planned construction schedule. Uh, end to end is 16 to 17 months. Uh, we anticipate starting uh, mobilizing, uh, you probably start starting to see some, some pieces of movement uh, towards the site. So we're looking towards this week and, and that'll continue uh, throughout uh, April and May. Um, we are dependent on, on a, right now with a few, uh, just some permitting uh, that is ongoing with the city. Uh, there's an existing building on the site at 20 Hamilton, um, and we're planning to commence the abatement a little bit, uh, probably next week, but uh, we, we are hoping to uh, schedule a meeting with the direct rear neighbors. We've been in communication with them, and I, I saw Wanda was on the, on, the, on the meeting tonight. Nice to e-meet you, Wanda, and hopefully we can, we can meet up and just talk about that process, because uh, that has to happen first. We'll move into demolition following, again, depending on uh, the permits, right into excavation and remediation of the soil and site servicing. And then we'll start with our structural work and building envelope, uh, looking at a construction completion sometime in, uh, I'd say, Q3 of 2022. We're targeting June um, in that time frame. So it may be late Q2, early Q3. So this view uh, shows the overall view of how we're going to set up the site. Um, and predominantly this will be uh, charged with Elliston. We're gonna, oops, I just I'm, did something on my screen. Um, so our site office and our COVID screening and all of the, the uh, administration of the site will be housed in 22 Hamilton, uh, directly next door, the former launch fire building. And then we will fence the entire site uh, taking up the sidewalk in front of the properties, both uh, 1620 and 22. And uh, the next slide will show uh, the pedestrian routing. So we are encouraging that the both to along uh, Wellington and again on Armstrong that the pedestrians will cross the streets to go down the east side of Hamilton to avoid just having to cross the street intermittently through Hamilton. We can't control that fully, but uh, there'll be no access across the front of the, of the properties to do that. So, um, and that's uh, hopefully going to work effectively and safely. And we'll, we'll be monitoring uh, all of that uh, as we go through the con various construction stages. Next slide. It's a proposed trucking route. Um, so, from our uh, logistics, you know, either east or west coming off the 417 would go north onto Parkdale towards, uh, towards Wellington, likely take a left, uh, a left turn onto uh, Wellington and then a right turn onto Hamilton. And then similarly, uh, just circle back out through Armstrong to Parkdale and back out to the 417. So we, we've kind of laid out different uh, different stages of the logistics plan. This kind of re re would be repetitive, but this would be our excavation where you see it completely fenced and we'll dig. It, we, it's a single story basement, so it's not a deep excavation. Um, so we'll do that in, uh, as I said, in, in fairly, fairly fast order, we hope, and then move right into our foundation, our structural work. Next slide. So we've provided two, uh, two views, one of the, the crane that uh, giving the crane location, which would be towards the west of the property, the, uh, the back of our building, uh, our development. Um, and similarly, the, the other view, so there's a better, there's a view of how the crane will work, uh, be located from the east or looking east. And ultimately, I think we're targeting, you know, it's not inside eight to 10 months for the structure to be complete and then the crane will come down. That's it, Lau. Um, one of our uh, guiding principles and ethos would be that, you know, we, we are becoming a neighbor for the community and, and our owners, uh, as owners, we, we want to be part of the community and contribute and support the community. Um, construction is disruptive. I've been doing it for a long time. Despite all the best planning in the world, there's, there's issues that arise. Um, so, 
Uh, that being said, uh, Ellis, Don, and ourselves are always will be available. We'll have protocols in place to to deal with issues and resolve issues and uh, and respectfully. And uh, so we we're completely open to be reached uh, as we uh, get go forward. We can provide uh, you know Lee and and Mike will be there full time. I'm in town. Uh, our uh, Lau and I's uh, communication are. You can contact us directly uh, at any given time. So uh, we want to be perfectly respectful as well as uh, cooperative to to the neighbors while we're while we're building our our products or our, this building. So uh, thanks to Wanda, as she also provided us uh, the Hittenberg Community Association Developer Guidelines, and um, we've reviewed that. There's there's nothing within that document that uh, cannot or will not adhere to. So again, I think it's respectful development, and that's uh, that's what we hope to achieve and uh, and act. Not to say that uh, there won't be issues that arise again. The, unfortunately, construction can be disruptive. So, uh, I just as a as a as a last point, um, both the public and our workers' health and safety is our top priority. So we're cognizant that uh, it's a quite a busy uh, a busy park across the street, particularly in the summertime. And particularly as we knock on wood, hopefully come out of the pandemic, uh, there'll be more activity. So we're cognizant of that. Uh, and we'll be monitoring that uh, closely with our traffic and, and with, certainly with Lee on site, uh, our traffic and, and our, our sub-trades contracts uh, for routing. If we have to change and modify, we will to suit uh, how that works best for everybody's protection. So that's... Uh, that's pretty much the presentation, Fiona. I think, uh, I hope I didn't go too fast, but uh, it's- and We can go back onto any slides. Uh, people have specific questions on that. Perfect. Okay. Um, sorry. Sorry, bear with me, everyone. There we go. Okay, um, I've now given everyone the ability to unmute themselves and I will take questions in the order of electronically raised hands. So I don't see any electronically raised hands yet, but Randy has unmuted himself. Do you have a question, Randy? Yes, <clears throat> uh, just a, a quick question for you. Uh, the Honeywell site's a bit of a hotspot for groundwater issues. Um, have have you done a recent uh, a groundwater test on the um, on the wells on the site? Yes, we have, Randy. It's a, a good question. Uh, initially, so our recent tests, our most recent tests were uh, October of last, uh, and we just this this just came up with the city. Uh, our, we're testing to MECP standards. But we're, this site is uh, not does not have a groundwater contamination issue that's beyond table uh, beyond the uh, regulations requirements. We 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 have soil that we have to remediate, but the groundwater is not uh, is not outside of the the compliance parameters. Yeah, congratulations. Good for you. Thank. You. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a worry in that area. Um, the only the only other question I really have is uh, with regards to uh, I own the building directly behind you at 97 Hinton. Okay. Um, well, nice to meet you, Randy. Um, the the site office is going to be in the in the uh, former. I think it was fuel launch launch fuel whatever it was. You call launch, it. launch. Yeah, fire. launch launch fire. Launch fire. That's it. Do you own that building now? Is that part of your development? We we are in the process of acquiring that property, so yes. Okay. All righty. Well, hello, neighbor. <laughs> well, I hope, Randy, that uh, if we can, I that uh, I I don't can't recall if you were on the email chain with respect to the uh, meeting with the the rear yard neighbors and uh, some of the concerns or at least ha having a little uh, on site type of uh, review meeting to go through the abatement and the processes as well. You know, some of our rear, we're pretty close on the rear on the rear yard. So I, I'd like to, if, if you can, join that meeting or feel free to call me directly, and we can go through things. Yeah, the your property only overlaps 
um, by just a, f a few meters. Um, the, I guess the, the, the bigger issue is going to be the trees that exist. Uh, I'm really not sure the, the property lines are not exactly the fence line. So I'm not sure who owns which tree, but there are two very large uh, trees in my northeast corner, which is your southwest corner. Agreed. And okay. one is a Manitoba maple. Uh, and I, I would assume it's coming down. Um, and but then there's the maple in the rear yard of my neighbor on Hinton um, to the north. Is is that tree is that tree staying or is that tree on your property or is it on the neighbor's property? So the, the I believe you're correct in saying that the Manitoba maple is coming down. So we've hired Astrid Ingrid of uh, she's a local arborist. She's a Westport resident as well. She'll uh, uh, and uh, Forrester. So she'll be helping us with that um, remove the tree removal. Um, we'd also like to have that discussion with your neighbor. I'm not sure who who on on pruning up the uh, uh, basically helping understand the retention of the tree and how that's going to work out uh, but it is intended that the what one will come down and the, the i think the ours the, the one to the north would be retained so I'm not yeah you i mean at the, the setback on the building is about three meters yeah your new building and and so really it's a question of how far the excavation is going to creep into the rear yard setback yeah, so we we uh, and Lee is on the fault. We've we've uh, because our our building footprint. Well, we're close there, Lee. Are we not? Uh, but we've we've tried to stay out of that tree root zone as best we can with an open cut there. So I think okay. that's the plan. So yeah, we I, our grade is a bit higher than the neighbors at the, to the back. The grade is quite a, is a little bit higher. So when we take that down, we plan to slope from the property line to the to the footings. Um, but at the one tree, we do plan on putting shoring around that tree because we don't think we'll be able to put the slope to and, and protect the tree if we don't. Yeah. So I think as we evolve there, Randy, it's a good, and for others on the call who are neighbors, uh, I'd love to meet again and go through this as we, as we redevelop that, the property as well as the, the rear yards, we're, we're open to suggestions and opportunities that arise for all of us there. That's, that's kind of the, the open kind of comment that I'll make. Uh, if something works for, for all of us and it's a better, better plan without damaging anything or replacing something, we'll, we'll look at that. So that's not a problem for us. Good. Thanks, James. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, Cheryl is next, and then there's some questions in the chat. So Cheryl. Thanks. Um, so my questions have to do with the effects on the Parkdale market. Um, so in previous developments, all the workers parked in the paid parking that just kept punching the meters there, but that then takes up all the parking uh, for people who come to support the market. So do you have a plan for where your workers are going to park so they're not there taking all the and affecting other parts of the community? And is the road going to be at any point in time on Hamilton, again, reducing access for people coming to patronize the Parkdale market. I'll take this. I may get some support from, uh, from Lee on this, but uh, as a Parkdale market uh, uh, purchaser, I'm aware of the parking issues. Our intent would be not to use and to mandate that that public parking is not, is not for our workers parking. I believe Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, we're looking at adjacent lots or surrounding which that would be the, that would be the area for which they park, but we would actually stipulate that that parking is not for permanent worker parking. Good. Correct. Is that, cor is that correct, Lee? Yeah, yeah, we need to find some parking somewhere. We're anticipating like 50 workers on this site at, you know, at the peaks and so. But I think you can, you know, maybe the trucks can't get in, but up at uh, Holland Cross, I, my understanding is I think there is open parking there, especially during the pandemic, but they plan to redevelop and um, plan to not put any extra parking in, I think, and that won't happen a bit. So they may be able to 
use that underground parking if the trucks can get into that space. Okay. Yeah. And Lee, I'll, I will say this too. It's uh, and it's probably recognized, Cheryl. It's it's uh, we can mandate. It's it's kind of hard to. We'll have to monitor it as well, right? So that's I mean, if we see our workers come parking there, they could be short term parking. Maybe that's okay, but for long term, we'll just we'll keep an eye on it. But it's you know we don't have flags or or permits that that would identify that as a worker car. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll monitor it as best we can. Okay, yeah. thank you. And then the second, are you going to close the road at all at any point? Uh, I think there there will be some uh, some like as we erect that tower crane, that might be on a weekend where we have to shut it down for a couple hours or four hours or so. I think the plan is not to uh, tr try to minimize that to the fullest degree, but when we're hoisting uh, either the crane or like installing the crane or removing the crane or hoisting large uh, mechanical equipment to the roof, those may be instances where we would uh, where we would need to either take up half the road. Uh, but we'll again, Lee maybe could comment here. I think I'm pretty close to what uh, what the plan would be. That's right. So we want to minimize how much we're closing the road down. So it'll be for very specific items like the equipment or the tower crane set up or dismantle. And um, yeah, that uh, most of our hoisting we're going to do from the parking lot um, at 22 Hamilton and uh, possibly the parking lane on the road just on the, on the west side of the street. So the front where the sidewalks closed. And if we have to do anything, it would be from the parking lane and try to maintain the, the two-way traffic at, at all times. Good, that's great, thank you. And also, if you do have to close it, if you can in advance let both the BIA know and the market, then they can put it out on their social media, just sort of an announcement, you know, on Saturday or whatever day. Um, there may be some road closures for a short period of time, just gives the customers a bit of a heads up. There yeah. are also surface parking lots up at, um, up at Holland Cross as well. And because Tunney's, who knows when people <laughs> will be back there, I'm sure that that is possible now because not many people parking up there these days, so. Cheryl, uh, just on the, the, the advisement to the BIA, is it, is it maybe at the, and as, as I said in my in my uh, in our deck our presentation for protocols is this something that if we were to as best we could plan it out and then make the advisory to uh, the counselor's office uh, Fiona is that something that you would disperse to or how would that is that I'm just trying to think of an efficient process so everybody the same hey we're closing the road and and is there, you know, a three or four day notice and, and that sort of thing? Those sorts of details would be helpful if you, if we could set a protocol that way we know uh, exactly what's the best thing for the community. Yeah, so I can notify um, folks who I'm already in touch with. So I pretty much, I, hold on. I think I know everyone on this thread except for Ashley. I, I haven't had the chance to meet you yet if you're a resident. Um, so I can definitely send a road closure uh, notification to Cheryl, Randy, Wanda, and Jay, as well as the BIA and Zach over with the market. You are also, there is notifications that you have yeah. to provide to, to neighbors. So um, you would have to fulfill that as well, but, uh, and you would have to fill that in advance of the closure. I, it's usually like 10 days or something um, in advance. So uh, what I would be circulating wouldn't be uh, the 10 day advance notice, it would be a more immediate notice, but I'm happy to circulate what, what comes in my inbox as long as you're following the proper protocols that they'll make you follow anyways. Okay, thanks Fiona. Yeah, I was talking about the broader kind of social media thing. At the... We generally don't tweet out like individual okay. road closures associated with particular yeah. sites. I try to keep things um, encapsulated because um, just it's, it's that just seems to be how Jeff likes to do things. And sorry, I noticed Dan is here as well. Dan, we can also uh, circulate anything to you for your for your residents next door as well. And uh, Fiona Ashley's on our team. She's part of the Yellow Dawn. Uh, well. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I think we have more team than than residents on this call, but that's okay. Um, 
Carol, did you have any more questions? Okay, there's a few questions in the chat. I'll just uh, read them. There's three. Uh, is, it, is this eight or nine stories? Are they going to be condos or rentals? And what's your plan for the overhead electrical lines? Uh, it's the total building is nine stories tall, including the penthouse. Uh, it is going to be purpose built rentals, so not condominiums. Uh, and the overhead lines, uh, we are working with hydro, they're remaining in place. We have, we're obligated to protect them during obviously uh, for safety, uh, with the safety diameter, a safety zone around the lines and predominantly that we'd be hoisting uh, from 22 Hamilton with only select hoists coming over those lines. And so that would be in compliance to the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Uh, Lee, is there anything I've missed there or that incorrectly, which is possible. You said that perfectly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, thanks. Uh, I see Wanda's hand up. So Wanda, you should be able to unmute yourself. Okay, there you go. I had a, a few questions um, or comments. I, I know that uh, I live on Hinton, so I'm right the street from the smart living construction area. Um, I know that there are never 50 men on that site. And they're using up all of the parking at the Daniel O'Connell Phil's Diner area. Also using parking down on the northwest side of Armstrong and Hinton. And I think they've got guys parking in other areas. So if everybody comes in in a vehicle and you, you're, you may have as many as 50 people, that's going to be a lot of parking. I just want, it's, it's not a question, it's just a comment I wanted to make um, because it is, it, it is, if everybody's coming in and their, their pickup truck, it's going to be a real problem. And it looks like you guys are going to overlap. So Smart Living and your project are going to be in this two block area for a year or more. So it's going to be a challenge. Um, the one big question I had um, and I'm not 95 Hinton, but 95 Hinton is, uh, the backyard is that white block building. So when it comes down, are you going to put up a privacy fence or something so that the people whose backyard is all of a sudden going to be exposed, they'll have some privacy or, or what are you doing with that? Yeah, uh, so, so Wanda, I can, uh, thank you for the comment on the parking. I think, uh, uh, Lee's, Lee and the Ellis Dodd team are certainly aware of uh, urban parking situations and the pre preference to park on the overwhelm the streets. Uh, the, uh, so I mean, I think we're going to try to find uh, lots uh, that are designated for our teams, not to say that that'll alleviate everything, but it'll certainly help. Um, with respect to the rear of the property, uh, yes, we will be developing a, a, a privacy fence uh, and again, that's part of the conversation I'd like to have. So in our design, we will be replacing that back. There will be a fence completely across our backyard or our rear yard uh, mm -hmm. adjacent to the neighbors. So, um, and I, as I mentioned, I think it was to Randy uh, would be, that's, an, you know, that's what, that's what our in, design intent is now. If something works better, like certainly we need a fence and we're going to proceed with the fence, but as it might impact and, and change, you know, there's opportunities to do things with our neighbors that work for them as well as works for us. So it will be screen, yes, one. Okay, yeah, that, that's important for the, the tenants of 95 Hinton because um, they're the ones who will be most affected by that, that building coming down. Um, and the comments about the trees, um, there's that large Manitoba maple that it, it, I, when the plans came out, um, that, that tree was going to be removed um, I did talk to the arboretist in charge of this project, and he said that one would be removed. It's a distinctive tree, as is the large tree at the back of 95 Hinton. Now, it's entirely on the 95 Hinton side of the property line, but it's the one that uh, we were talking about needing the roots um, uh, protected. But both of those trees are distinctive trees. There's another... Uh, Norway maple uh, that's directly behind our garage, which is a property line tree as well, um, much smaller because it's an offspring of that large Norway maple at 95. 
Um, so I'm concerned about protecting the two property line trees or ones that you know might get damaged. Uh, I did go on to DevApps and I was looking at um, the landscape proposal. And at one point there were supposed to be trees along the 10, the, the three meter rear yard setback, but they're not showing up in the landscaping at all. All I'm seeing is clumps of grass along the pro property line. So I am concerned if we're taking account down one distinctive tree and probably going to damage a second distinctive tree that we're not replacing it with anything along that, that, that rear setback. Uh, um, the Arboretus did tell me that there were some really creative ways of doing that with trees that will grow and provide tremendous canopy uh, without going into a large footprint that they will, they could easily be put in that um, 10 feet that's between the back of your building and, and our property lines. So yeah. I think that was a big concern when I when I opened that up now. DevApps is the latest I could find on it. It was done in, in 2019. And I'm sure that I was talking to the Arboretus last summer. So I'm not sure why these, these uh, DevApps are not updated, but not. So I'm hoping that the uh, the landscaping plan is going to be updated with something a little bit more accessible than what's there right now. Um, so you've answered pretty much all of our other questions. I do have to say, um, I'm hoping that you follow through with your consideration. Um, you know, you're talking about consideration and working with the neighbors because um, across the street has been terrific. Uh, the Smart Living Project, they've been amazingly great. Um, it's not been a single time we haven't been able to get quick resolution to issues that have come up. Um, and I'm sure you can appreciate that uh, one of the other developments in this area was a horror story. It was a horror story from start to finish. So I, I just wanna make sure that we keep that relationship. I, I, I'd be thrilled if we can have this, a similar relationship with the neighbors that Smart Living has has uh, managed to develop. Okay, well, we, we have a benchmark. Hopefully, Wanda, to date, we uh, our intent our, our our intent is to uh, is to, to do exactly as as we've we've committed and said here. Um, and as I mentioned before, either myself or Lal as the ownership uh, representative and and our, and our site team are our our partners will be fully available. So. Um, We'll work with you. I want to go back on your tree issue. So the update to that DevApps plan is real and we have updated the plan and is one of the issues I'd like to talk to the rear neighbors about. Um, ultimately, we have a, a, three meter, a three meter kind of maintenance area between our fence and, and the building, which is, it, it's really, it's a non-usable space for us. Um, but we've put two trees into the north, uh, I guess that would be the, the north, west corner spacious and with respect to the retained tree on nine five uh we are hoping to have dialogue with that neighbor to to you know well a i think when we remove the tree maybe there's opportunity to clean clean and help help the health of that tree uh it's quite uh, not to not to say we alter the canopy but but maybe have the arbor our art our forestry and or arborist team look at it and work with uh, work with all of us there, and or opportunities to plant in the neighbor's backyard versus in our backyard because we have this kind of dead zone. So maybe there's opportunities there, and I, I just we're, we've been thinking along that lines, but we'd like to open that dialogue to have those discussions. Yeah, I, like I say, I was surprised that um, nothing is showing uh, because I know Steve Boche has sent um, updates to that building as things have gone along. Uh, and both he and the Arboretus, um, and this would have been, I think before you bought the property, both were saying that they would extend those two trees that were in the, the north side of your property, your rear yard, that you would get some more put along throughout the whole, um, like throughout the whole length of that setback. So uh, like I say, I don't have anything past 2019 showing up on dev apps. So mm. I'm just- oh, Okay, I see what you're saying. Yes, well, I, I spoke to Mark, at, at the forester of the city and to Steve, obviously during the development of our design and the transfer 
So right now we, we don't, uh, that's the first I've heard of that versus the two trees that we have, which kind of makes sense from a design perspective because they would ultimately screen the, the, the entire rear yard uh, eventually. But if there's, as I said, I'm just gonna be open here. Uh, if it works for us and it works for you and it's a better solution, we'll, we'll certainly look at it and go from there. That sounds perfect, yeah. Because, um, because honestly for us, it's, we'd rather, to be frank, we we rather have the trees in uh, in the rear yard neighbors and keep our our it's because it's just a dead area for us and we have we have some uh, a we we have a drainage requirement in there so our our tree growth and even with our landscape architect uh, uh, lastly and associates they're saying okay well we might have some challenges on tree growth so again, we, 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 it does, we're open to a solution that works for everybody that gets that canopy and those trees healthy in the future uh, in the best forward, right? And uh, we can work out reciprocal agreements on how that can work out. So I'm, I'm to we're totally open to that. That's perfect. Uh, I'm going to mute myself so that I'm not making noise in the background, but um, we can talk about meeting after, like if meeting on site to discuss some of the things before you do your demolition. Um, sure. If, if like to have that if we could have the uh, i think your concern was to have site meeting before the abatement starts which we would start next week um so if if you can meet with your i i sent an email back to you just requesting that if you could gather if if your team could or if you're if you because you you know the neighbors you're talking to i don't maybe they're all here i, I don't uh, if we could meet this week, and uh, you think you had mentioned after work hours or close to the end of the workday, we're open to Thursday or Friday, and if it need be Monday. Uh, but we'd like to mobilize our our uh, uh, our abatement team for 20 Hamilton starting next week. Okay, okay, I'll send something off to you by email. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, Wanda. Perfect. Thanks, Wanda. Um, I don't have any question. There's one question in the queue uh, that Wanda kind of brought up about the um, DevOps site. I'll have to check in with the planner and see um, if we can get updated documents on DevOps. Um, so I'll check in with Steve and uh, see what's possible there. Um, Cheryl, your hand's still up, but I don't know if that's from before or if you have a new question. Uh, no, I have a new question. Perfect. Um, so this has to do with the excavation um, part. Are you blasting? And uh, I, even if you blast, I know you'll be hoe ramming. It's nice you're not going down too deep, but the rock here is really hard. Um, so uh, from another project, I've just learned there's these wonderful things called eco barrier mats which help to reduce the noise a little bit for the neighbors as well as some protection for stone chips flying all over the place, which we have some experience with as well. So what sort of process are you gonna do for the excavation and will you use those eco barrier mats to try to reduce some of the, uh, the noise for the neighbors? Uh, I, I'll start this and again, I'll, I'll turn it over to Lee if I'm saying it correctly. There, A, there is no blasting on this site. We don't need to do, so there'll be no explosives on this site whatsoever. Um, and there may be some select hoe ramming, but it's for one pit, if I'm correct, Lee? It's yeah, the sump pits will likely get into the rock, but um, hopefully it'll take a day or two of, of chipping to make that uh, deep enough. It's wow. just, yeah, it's, it's, we're not anticipating a lot of uh, hoe ramming and, and no blasting, so. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, because most places here, it's, you know, even for um, a 10 by 30 meter lot, it's like three weeks of hoe ramming. So that's good news. Well, based on the, unless, unless the information that we've got from our, our, our highly paid consultants and geotech are, are completely inaccurate, and uh, I, which I hope it isn't, uh, that's our plan. Again, we're, we don't have a very large and deep basement and it is, uh, so uh, it's just the sump pits that have to be lower than the, the lower floor level that we have, that we anticipating we might get some rock. So, but point uh, taken on mitigation measures lead for, uh, for the rat tat 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. 
Okay, uh, the only hand I see is Wanda. Is that, do you have another question or was that from before? I'm not quite sure. Sorry, that's from before. Okay, no problem at all. I don't see any questions in the chat and I, I don't see any other hands raised. So I don't think we have any more questions. I'll give it a second in case anyone is thinking of something. Um, but yeah, even if you think of something afterwards, you can obviously email our office and we can help uh, answer the question or connect you with um, James and Lal and, and make sure that you get the information um, that you're, you're looking for. And again, this will be recorded and, and thrown on YouTube for, for any neighbors. So I'm gonna kind of conclude it. I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, this was short and sweet, so definitely feel free uh, to follow up with anything afterwards. Uh, James and Lau and Michael and Lee and um, Ashley, thank you all for joining us uh, uh, tonight. Um, we really appreciate it and, and looking forward to the project being completed. And uh, Cheryl, Wanda, Randy, uh, Jay was here, Dan from next door. Thank you all for, for joining us as well. And, and it'll be an active summer with construction, but hopefully we'll all get through it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you all. And nice meeting you. And uh, again, feel free to reach out through uh, through Fiona if there's any questions to us and our team. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have Bye. a great Thanks, evening. Thanks, Fiona. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Evening. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye now.